Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Quick Fix. Now last week we painted this, um, this little landscape really simply just showing how if you use uh, lighter colours to show distance and stronger colours to create the, the pieces in the foreground, um, you can't go wrong. And so everyone loved this so much, I thought why don't we have one more go. Um, this week on YouTube we've been painting cherry blossom trees, um, one of my favourite things to paint, so I thought why not do uh, another piece inspired by the cherry blossoms in the style of the painting we did last week to just revisit a quick fix that everybody wanted to know about. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to begin by wetting the page this time. I'm going to just sort of wet it with my one wash brush, just a section in the middle here because there are a few ways we can go about creating these little landscapes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some permanent rose and get it really quite dilute. I'm also going to get a bit of yellow ochre in there and mix up just a slightly blushy pink and I'm going to begin by popping that in and just dabbing it all in there really. Um, but I'm going to create a bit more colour, a bit of a larger shape out to the sides. So dotting the brush, dabbing it rather than just sweeping it around the place allows for the tiniest bit of light and shade. Speaking of light and shade, that's the very topic today. Um, even with this faint colour, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a slightly more concentrated version and just pop in some underneath when you're painting wet on wet, like this is, you will find that the colours will fade and dry, uh, fade as they dry. So even though we're adding in a little bit more colour here, we're still going to find that it's going to lighten up right. And now I'm going to take a bit of green gold and just place that in, going up to the top there. Coming down, then a little bit of sap green, which is just going to come in on the sides there. But still nice and light and delicate, and um, we're just going to let that sort of seep in and dry. But as with this piece here you can see that we have a similarity that we've got the sense of, of distance of the the colors of going up off into the distance and um, the trees are getting smaller there we could add in a little bit of sky as well why not just make sure if you're using the same brush for everything that you're really cleaning it and blotting it off there and I'll just take a tiny bit French ultramarine blue and just very loosely sweep it in there but not get too involved. Lovely. Okay so this is drying slowly but we do want to just let it dry just a little bit more so we will give it a few minutes and come back to it. So I've given that a minute, it's still a tiny bit damp, which is perfect. So I've essentially sat and watched paint dry for a few minutes. Um, I'm now going to start adding in a bit more color in the foreground here. Because you can see it's still seeping in, but it's gonna slowly start to dry and, and not sort of settle in quite so much, which is this the sweet spot of what we want really. So I'm, I'm creating a sort of underside for these cherry blossom trees, but I'm focusing on the trees in the foreground using Alizar and Crimson and a sort of strong permanent rose. It's almost as if you sort of suddenly, through the mist, it suddenly appears as if we can suddenly see some cherry blossom trees appearing.
as we add more colour, more texture, it's just starting to hold its shape a little bit more. And I'm using colour that is a little wet, but essentially it's just straight out the palette really. But it's quite dilute on a wet brush, so it's just allowing us to use just the wetness on the page. I just really want you all to see sort of in real time the sense of these colours just starting to hold their shape a little bit more and here comes in with a bit more colour underneath. I don't want too much of a wet brush. Now just placing in just one or two little extra little dabs to start to define this tree or trees in the foreground, but I'm not worrying about trees in the background because they've had quite enough detail. Thank you very much. And now time for a little bit of a shadier colour underneath the tree. So I've just added a bit of Payne's Grey in there. in underneath the tree. And we're just stretching it out into the middle there. But again, as always, fainter towards the edge. And what it also means is we will just be adding more to the foreground. So here we go, a bit more shadow there and here we go and what's brilliant is the page is drying so that this darker color I'm putting in is not sort of blending in as much as it did so now I am going to let that dry and we will wait and then we can put in some nice details to really bring out uh, these trees. We've got that little dryer now and now I'm just mixed up a little bit of Burnt Sienna Payne's Grey. I've got my rigger brush and I'm now going to start sort of placing in a few sort of tree trunks, branches, for these trees in the foreground. It doesn't need to be much, but you can just find the little areas of lightness that look like they might be gaps in the trees. The rigger brush is fantastic for this kind of stuff. This is a size zero rigger brush and it's available in my various online shops, whether you want to go on Etsy or on my web shop. Um, it's up to you really, we ship globally from both. And then I'm just going to add in some little Now that might seem a bit silly doing ones at the back there, but I'm about to sort of explain what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to take a size 2 brush, get a bit of shadow, but I want to get it quite nice and faint because I'm still sort of working on these trees at the back. So I just want to create that sense of shadow underneath. So it's faint, but it's still there. 
and just now because it's dry it means I can just brush up and get a sense of the sort of underside, shadowy underside of the trees and then down here a bit more colour And of course, this dabbing all this gives us an idea of the sort of shadow underneath the trees. And just that stronger colour in the foreground. just helping really bring out the sense of depth. So there you have another, just, well, it's a quick fix, isn't it? A quick little piece, just giving you extra inspiration and tips on that rather popular subject from last week. If you haven't already seen it, just head to our quick fix playlist where you will find it. And there is a sweet little cherry blossom distance depth tutorial for you. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.